This last year has been absolutely amazing. We made major progress on all of our cars. We've got deals in place for new cars to come out and be restored. And our shop has transformed from what was once a dark cave to now a big, beautiful new facility that everybody's excited about working in. We got the 71 CUDA 446 barrel EV2 Tor Red Shaker Hood car back from the dipper, stripped down to its bare bones, and is now ready to start doing body work. In addition to that, we completed the restoration on the 1971 Charger 446 pack, one of 98 made. It turned out flawless, gorgeous, and without doubt is one of the most beautiful 71 Chargers on the planet. We hired Holly to help us hunt down the history and backstory on these amazing cars. And so far, she's been doing a fantastic job. No thanks to Darren, who quit, took my entire crew camping, and wouldn't come back until I promised to completely restore his car, which I agreed to, even though he chipped the Black Cuda and lied about it. Speaking of the Black Cuda, which is a tribute car to the original Cuda that appeared in the Phantasm film, I got a call from Don Coscarelli, horror film legend and creator of the Phantasm series. It turns out he's a big fan of the show and is really excited to see our version of the Phantasm Cuda. It turns out that Mr. Coscarelli is going to come up here personally and check out the Phantasm Cuda, along with the star of the original movie, Michael Baldwin. When they get here, they're going to sign the car, drive it, take pictures, and relive some great memories. This means we only have three days to get absolutely everything finished on the car, and I will not disappoint my two favorite horror film icons. Come hell, high water, or Darren Kirkpatrick, I will finish the car on schedule. The unburied dead, the unburied dead are coming back to life. Coming back to life. My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. Just shut your mouth before I actually punch you out. Can I leave a handprint on your face? All right, Chrome Dome, we got three days. Let's rock it out. Let's take the um, number one plug out. And what we need to do is uh, pull out the spark plug to the number one cylinder, and we crank the engine over until it hits top dead center of the compression stroke. And when it's on top dead center, TDC, if you will, that's what I call it. Then the distributor drops down in the hole, and it should be pointing to the number one position on the distributor cap. This will be factory OEM specs. We do not have our yellow cap group 24 battery yet. Where's the negative cable? Is it not hooked up yet? It is not even on there. Nice. That's what I was hoping is nobody put that on yet. Let's see if it'll actually crank over or not. So what I'm doing when I touch the relays together, I'm connecting the solenoid to the main power, which is simulates exactly what happens when you hit the key. Perfect start to a graveyard car's day. Right off the bat, car doesn't start. Something's stuck. Was it in gear? I think so. Well, that could have explained it. The problem is, you're not just trying to start an engine, you're actually turning a transmission, which is turning a drive shaft, which is turning a rear end. That's a lot of load on a starter. Probably why you're supposed to put the clutch in or leave it in neutral. Last time Darren was here, he put it in gear. You know why he had to put it in gear? It wasn't neutral when we pushed it in. He had to put it in gear so he could get inside there and pretend he was driving like it was 30 years ago. Okay. Jack needs to go higher. What are you ladies doing? Actually, everything's going really well right now. The Cuda's coming together nicely. The toilet bugs are all working together in my favor. The only problem is I can't find the original replica yellow cap battery. Why don't I where have do the want? yellow cap battery that I ordered two months ago? Yeah. Why, why, why oh, I know where that's at. Once again, the dreaded C word, communication. Why are you looking at me like I'm Because a yesterday I asked convict. you where the yellow cap battery was. There's really no compromise whenever it comes to Mark and I trying to uh, communicate with each other. He either speeds up and he talks extremely fast. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? Or he slows down and belittles you whenever he tries to say something. Where was it yesterday when I asked you? 
I put it up there. No, the correct answer is it hadn't showed up yet, right? I will have to agree with Josh. I believe that we speak two different languages. I'm still using English. He does some type of simian gibberish. He hits frappe on the blender, they get spun around inside that thing, and then whatever comes out of his mouth is the result of whatever he mixed in the pot. Hey! Now that the battery's in, we can go ahead and spin the motor over fast enough to create some compression. Bring it up on top dead center and set the distributor at number one. Now you're gonna hold that light on the harmonic balancer. Okay. The balancer that is harmonic. Ooh. And as the compression comes around and blows my finger off the cylinder, mm -hmm. we know that we're at top dead center of the compression stroke. Check for understanding. Check, understanding. Standing check under. Can you say compressing? Okay. Compressing. Compression. Yeah. Compression. I'm just playing. So there's our mark right there. Would you roll that back to zero? Let there go the other way a little bit. There's zero. Once we've established top dead center on the number one cylinder, we can go ahead and put the distributor in. After that, we install the rotor, the distributor cap, then all of the wires in the correct firing rotation. Once we have all that done, it's time to install the brand new high performance Holley carburetor. It's 750 CFM double pumper dual feed. I think we're missing something. What are we missing now? I think we're missing Darren. You know what, because the two-legged stool sample isn't here right now, I can't put the shaker together because I foolishly trusted him with the bolts and the hardware that it takes to put the shaker together and we need him to help put that dash in. It's gonna take three guys to set that dash. I'm not gonna beat the crap out of a yeah. brand new dash. Darren's not here, that's the game. He's missing in action. We've got a ton of work to do in three days. That's part of the game. I'm not gonna fight over it. I'm not gonna get mad over it. I'm not gonna jump up and down. Let's just keep going. Okay. I mean, without him, I really think it's gonna compromise the ability to finish the car on time, which is gonna compromise his breathing. I guarantee it. In spite of you guys, we're gonna get it done. I think he's not ready. Nobody knows what it's like to work with Mark. Not tribute worthy. Oh Royal and I had went out to put the seats together for the 71 Cuda because we didn't have the hardware to bolt the shaker together with. Uh, that hardware I had entrusted to Darren, who, in classic Darren fashion, had disappeared off the face of the earth. Oh, well, cool, look, I can go ahead and put the shaker on now. All right, nobody's holding me back. I wonder where everybody else is at. They were all wild about working on the car. I don't even see them. Okay. Looks pretty good. Not bad. What I was gonna say is, I think you set that. Once you figure out how far it has to go down to kit the latch. Need my help? Looks like you're stuck. Where were you when we were putting the wiper on? The wiper transmission three hours ago. Where were you when we were putting here. the distributor I was here. in? I was gathering, I was cleaning parts for the shaker. You weren't here. Yeah. I didn't see your car, car anywhere. I parked over here. Over where? Over the neighbor's next door. Why? Gonna surprise you. I want to get a little work and like a surprise for you. The surprise would be getting coming in and going to work like you're I did. I was working on the shaker parts. If that shaker is on that car and you t and you try to take the glory for it. Well, the shaker is on the car, Mark. Yep, I thought mother. you might be happy. I hate it. Every time I close my eyes, I got that dolphin face mongrel making that flipper sound from, from flipper. <laughs> Putting that shaker on, grabbing all my glory and running out the door. Mark, I really thought I was doing you a favor. Honestly? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I don't understand why Mark gets so worked up. I was just doing my job and I thought it was surprising. I've been waiting two and a half years to put the shaker on so I could wipe it down and they could get that beautiful shot at the end. I'm sure they got that. I'm sure. Yeah, they got it with his I... crusty ass nightmare before Christmas hands. Whoosh y'all. If the doctor has to up my blood pressure medicine again, Darren's paying for it. Tell me what you think, tell me what you think. It looks like we're done. Oh, that's pretty, Darren. Look how it lines nice, up. Look how it man. lines up. Oh, here, give me that. You did that on your own? You said it wasn't that hard. Get a spot on. Oh, there's a few spots. Let me get cleaned up. Oh, you put the seal on it and everything. Mother.
basically everybody's gone home now, so I can be left the hell alone and get everything laid out for tomorrow. I just need to make sure we're ready to go. Retro Radio just made us a brand new radio for the 71 Cuda. It looks exactly like the original, except that doesn't. So that definitely isn't the radio. That's the radio though, however, for the 69 Charger Daytona. When I asked Josh, please give me a radio for the 71 Cuda, he says, yep, got her boss setting in there for you now. Look at that. Is it me? Is it me? Problem is, I've got a million things to do. Josh was supposed to make sure there was a 71 radio ordered for it. He told me he did actually order it and he did receive it. But if that is the only radio we have right now, then that car is gonna have to get delivered in front of Michael Baldwin, in front of uh, Don Coscarelli, in front of the owner with no radio in it. And we're supposed to be professional. Now there he is. What's that look for? Let me ask you something, Code back. Brown. Nice there, buddy. I have a terrifying question for you that I'm scared to death of the answer. The radio for the 71 Cuda. What parts bin did you get that out of? The Daytona bin. So. I have no idea how, how, how I'm supposed to respond anymore. I, I don't know. Did you only check in one radio? I did. So, it, so it's possible to say, it's fair to say, it's reasonably fair to assume you may not have the radio for the 71 Cuda. I wouldn't be happy if I was you. <laughs> well, I was only doing what you instructed me to do. Your eyes are like two turds in the snow. Nobody really knows what it's like to work with Mark Gregory Warman. It's become abundantly apparent to me that, uh, that you have a brain tumor. <laughs> no, I think, no, I don't mean, I hope not. Hey, I'll be the first person to admit it. I screwed up. You know what? I'm actually already looking forward to going to my other job. The only thing that would explain you going out to a church or Daytona bin and bringing me in a radio saying, I got a radio for the Cuda boss. One of two things, okay? One is you're a zombie and you should be in The Walking Dead. Two, you've got a brain tumor. You know, whether there's a radio or not a radio in, it doesn't matter anymore. We still have to have the car done and drivable so when Michael and Don get here, they'll actually have a reason to be here. Let's go to work. Mark BF Goodrich. We gotta put the car together. Yeah, we do. There's still like 25 things left to do. He should have checked back, it was such a big deal. You got a little bumpity bump. Yeah. You mean you're not finished? You didn't make the deadline? With only three days left to get the car done, time for Coscarelli to get out here. Um, we're a little bit concerned. There's, I've done a lot of work on it. We put bumpers on it, grill on it, taillights are back in it, front and rear valances on it. I've got the dash completely built out, but there's still like 25 things left to do underneath the hood, plus install the dash that we just built out in the seat. So uh, I'm not getting that warm, fuzzy feeling that we will make it, but um, I'm optimistic. I'm just worried. Well, it would have been really nice while the motor was out if you would have actually made the hole in the firewall for the shaker. Who are you talking to? But then again, you've never owned a shaker car, so I don't know. There's a reason there's a teacher out on the schoolyard during recess with the kids. Because if you don't, they end up being like Darren, where they put a shaker on a car just so they can get the glory for putting it on there, even though there's still a hole in the firewall that has to be made that should have been made months ago if he had actually followed the instructions I gave him. Oh, well, neither of you. Ouch. I built some. When? I did book. Which car? I built shaker cars. I don't think so. Which one? What, which one what? No, I'm asking you which one was the shaker that you built in e-body? I built a lot of e-body shaker cars. Name one. 70 Hemi Cuda convertible. <laughs> I've never built one either, but I know that there's a hole there. The shaker hood is one of the most rare and desirable options on the 70 and 71 e-body. Not all cars had it, like in the case of our Cuda. So what that means is we have to make a hole for the shaker cable. Yeah, we know there's, I know there's, there's a hole there's there. There's a dimple there You know it. how I know there's a hole there? Because four months ago, before the motor was put in, I asked you to drill the hole so we weren't bent over the side of the fenders. Can we drill the, the hole? Amen, brother. Mark and Darren just really need to quit their bickering and get back to work. Amen, Reverend. You Reverend, know what, in spite of you Reverend guys, Rose, we're gonna get it done. Hey. Whether he told me or not, I don't even remember. But he should have checked back, it was such a big deal. And we did measure, we did not go out back and measure the Phantom Cuda. It's very important when making the hole in the firewall that you put it in the right place and that emulates the original look of the pierced hole and that it's the right size so that it can take the factory size grommet. Now comes the fun part, we get to install the dash. Out of the way. Stop where you're at, Josh. Walk backwards. Oh, back you're back to your left. Side. 
Now, the best way to do this is to have somebody on the other side to pass it through to, so you can reposition. So I think I got it, Mark. Okay. You got it there, buddy? Yeah, I got it, buddy. <clears throat> Just kind of keep those out of the way. They're so much easier to put on now than later. Makes life yeah. so. Usually, there we go. when I was younger and thinner, I didn't mind laying upside down. Especially younger <laughs> and thinner. Here you go, buddy. Here you go. Thank you. What happens is it has to go down around that steering column, the two studs, so you can't have it anchored into place until you do that first. Roll the dash backwards a little like that. Okay, hang on there. Would that help if I pulled on the cable Yeah, if you oil? pull on it, you can just get it to park. There you go. Not the cable, but the actual grommet itself. I don't there. Know how to get the grommet, buddy. Can you? If you just kind of pull on the back side of the grommet while he pulls it Oh, I think it, it popped in. Maybe with a pair of wire cutters? Did you need a light? Dikes? Yeah. I think it popped in. Or needle nose pliers, maybe? Darren, did you hear what he said seven times? What? It's in. No, it's not in, you f Okay, Royal, yeah. <laughs> I guess Mark, we don't say just, the whole word. it's hung up in the insulation pad. Oh. Well, hang on, right, uh, right there, buddy. Push if you can. This would have been a lot easier if they would have drilled the hole before they put the dash in. This is what happens when I'm around YouTube. Okay. Really? Yeah. Now I had a bolt. Right behind you. I think it's the one God. right behind your foot, left foot there. Once again, Darren's done something hideous to me. What do you want, Mark? God dang it! I took the bolt out and set it on the ground, as innocent as a guy could do it, and now it's gone. I lay the bolts out. I do my job. I make sure all the provisions are there so that we can put a car together. I have no control over the unflushables when they come in and they start kicking and playing banner and grab ass. Next thing I know, I'm finding the same bolts again, cleaning them up and putting them back in. No, I think it's... It's always my fault, isn't it? That's not it. You know what? I, you're gonna blame it on me. I didn't do it. Say, um... Is it? You know, the only thing that really makes me mad is I had it setting over there and you put it some more safe. You, you got one coming. That's okay, I can hold this all day. Did you put that over there on that bench? I might have. He needs help, oh, he's, man. He's saying he did, he did it. Did you really? I did. <laughs> yeah, that was 100% me. Josh got lucky. He had a beautiful daughter, my granddaughter, absolutely perfect. But the odds of a perfect baby coming from him again are like a million to one. So I don't see what purpose his nuts serve anymore. I'll not touch anything until I talk to you, Mark. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Once we found the missing bolts, we put in the seat belts, the back seat and the dash, and everything went great. This is definitely one of my favorite parts of the build, knowing that you can see the finish line, knowing what the payoff is. This is the time when the other turds usually fold because it's a lot of pressure. I do well under pressure. I actually excel under pressure. So the fact that Coscarelli and Baldwin are coming up here only makes me work harder, be more accurate with the assembly. For whatever reason right now, things are going great. We're getting the back seat bottom and the back seat back put in. Seat belts are bolted in. We've got the uh, steering column, dashboard assembly, heater control box assembly, under dash vents. Everything is going together well on this. When we have the interior done, we're that much closer and we can see the finish line for the first time in nine months. So I need the sill plates. So there's your sill plate screws and there's your dash cover speaker screws that you were looking for. And the center mirror. Hey, ho, 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 where are you going, buddy? Mark needs to understand that I have other responsibilities. It's 12 o'clock. Yeah, I know. A short while ago, Josh had taken a job at a local hardware store, citing that he needed to make more money. Uh, instead of talking to me and asking me if he could get a raise or if I could facilitate his needs, um, he did that. And it's, it's an inconvenience for me. Uh, even though he's not completely worth having here, it's worse when you've counted on him and he's not here. You telling me, you telling me you can't tell those people that you need uh, one day off to help finish that car? I have to leave for my other job at noon, which it's, hey, hey about noon 30. Are you gonna compensate me for? I would have, given the opportunity, I would have compensated. If you would have said, Mark, I need some money. If you want me to call in uh, sick or, or tell him I need the day off, of course I would have. I feed you every day anyway, you freak, you mutant. You know, I've gotten used to getting stabbed in the back, but anymore, it's, it's getting expensive. I'm buying shirts all the time. 
You knew that I had to go to work at noon. You knew this. You know what happened to Judas, right? The bag of silver on the ground spilled underneath of him, his intestines all over the place because he snitched Jesus off to the Pharisees? It's just a couple of freaking hours. He knows he's just overreacting and being a drama queen. I'll see you later. Tell the Pharisees, hey. I don't really understand how that compares to being Judas Iscariot. I think what he did was a lot worse. Hey, we want the pinky pinky? After all of that? When you're pulling a suicide shift, everything's melodramatic. It's totally stalling. He's not ready. Get all the bottom end button. All we have left is to put the seats in it and the threshold moldings. Then it can go out to the hoist, get lifted up. We'll check all the fluid levels, top everything off, lower it down, and it'll be ready to start. He used to call me Ronnie Socks back in the day. Most people know who Ronnie Sox was. He drove Mopar race cars. He was a great shifter. He had really shifted four speed, really could row the gears. I was pretty much as good as Ronnie Sox, maybe even a little bit better. He's no king of four speeds. He, he's more like a queen of, of grinding gears. What? I think you maybe sat in it and bent it. I think you bent it when you sat in it. I can deal with Darren. I can deal with his craziness. What I can't deal with is when I specifically tell Long Turd how I want something done and he chooses to do it the opposite way. My case in point, the seat belts. Boy, no matter how many times you tell Josh, that's how he's gonna do it, his way. God, why? I said, now they can go either way. One way's right, one way's wrong. They're not, it's not, you, it's not noticeable so much until you go to try to plug them in. So please listen to me. And so we went over it, okay? Make sure that the buckle lays across the seat so as it's pointing towards this side that can clip into it and the shoulder strap that can clip into it. Does baby want a pinky? Does baby want the pinky pinky? After all of that, in the, one of the most miraculous twists of fate since, since the Kennedy assassination, that he put him in backwards? I mean, it just, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. It's, it's mind boggling, isn't it? You know what? When you're pulling a suicide shift, everything's melodramatic. Putting the seatbelts in the wrong place, it's not the end of the world, but it takes 15 minutes to switch back out the other way. So we just got the seats, kick panels, and threshold plates in the CUDA. So we're gonna run it through the Cookson door, move it out to the hoist, get it raised up in the air, and button up the bottom of it. Okay, so what I want to do is get the wheels and tires off of it and get the new ones from Coker over here, the 15.7s, get those on. I just don't want to put them on until we blood the brakes out. Then I want, Darren, if you can start at the back and check all the torques on all the bolts all the way through from the front to the back, let's do it. It's really important to bleed the brakes to get all the air out of the system. The way the brakes work is you push on the brake pedal, it compresses the fluid against the brake calipers and the rear brake cylinders to apply the brakes. And if you have any air in there, that air will compress. Air compresses a lot more than fluid does. So it's real important to get that air out or you're going to have real spongy brakes. Um, that air bubble could really cause a lot of problems. I'm looking forward to driving the 71 Black Phantasm Cuda since I am the best driver here. The other guys are doing just fine without me. Anybody that knows Graveyard Cars knows we started with nothing. So as we started adding equipment like our bin pack lifts, it, it didn't just change the look of the shop, it changed the professionalism of our job. And if I didn't have those hoists, if I didn't have the lifts, if I didn't have that partnership with that company and know that I can go to them whenever I have a broken part, if I didn't have that, I couldn't be doing the work, the incredible work that we're doing. Where did these come from, Coker? Yep. Nice. One of the things I like the best about Coker is they treat us very fair, their shipping is really fast and reliable. Most importantly, they spoil us. I'm always rest assured that not only do I get the wheels and the tires together as a package, mounted and balanced, but all of the accessories, they have all that data in front of them, they make the correct product. And so when I put it on my car, it goes on fast, I win, they win. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's good vendor. You are a strange one, buddy. The Shaker is absolutely the coolest option in the world. It's also one of the most difficult ones to work around. It takes up a huge footprint under the hood. It covers the whole top of the motor. So if you want to set the timing or the carburetor or check for leaks, you got to have that off first. 
Remember when you got your driver's license? Can I drive mom? Can I drive mom? Can I drive mom? Can I drive mom? Darren? Don't be an idiot when we're out here working. Or I'll come in there and I'll jerk you out by that old, rusty, old crap kicked in head of yours. We got the fluids topped off and everything checked, said okay. We're gonna start the car up for the first time in 20 years. Okay, you, ready? you may now start the vehicle. Gentlemen, start your engines. Woo, she got a little bump stick to her. I knew the car would start right up, which it did because I helped work on it. It sounds real good, but, but I knew it would. She got a little bumpity bump. Aha! I'm very happy about the way the Coot is turning out. Uh, it's a beautiful car. Yeah, it's a small block 340, uh, but it's a hard running 340 and it sounds good. Nice. Sounds pretty good, huh? Sounds nice pretty shake. good. Now it's time to put the shaker back on. We got a lot of work done on the CUDA and that is awesome. And a matter of fact, it runs and it runs great. Uh, we still have quite a bit left to do to it, so we're not across the finish line. Um, I, I hope that the three amigos out there don't just get carried away with celebrating when the fact is we're not out of the woods yet. I heard if you smoke marijuana, your hair goes away. Is that true? Oh, it's too much testosterone. Oh, is that it? Okay. Now that the car is running, looks like all the gauges are working, transmission's ready to go. Time to go out and go for what we call a little Mopar break-in. Graveyard style. I thought I was driving. Where are you going? I thought I was driving. You're not going anywhere. You're not driving. No, get in the passenger seat. Please don't wreck us. I don't want to wreck. I have no intention of wrecking us, buddy. Why would I, why do you think I want to wreck a go car and just finish? You go crazy sometimes. You I don't, I'm not gonna do anything until okay. this car has some mileage on it. Okay. Not oh, the same. Oh my. <laughs> Look at that shaker out there, fool. Oh my. <laughs> Hello, ladies. <laughs> That's really gonna like it. Oh, oh, oh ladies. <laughs> nope. Are we out of gas? Mother f He didn't tell me to put any gas in it. Why do you think I handed you the six gallon can? You didn't. You didn't have me no gas can. I'm you serious. Okay? I'm no. going to punch your skull no, inside I... out. I'm going to kick you in your you debunked, crazy ass hey, I... head starting to cave in like a six you week old gas, pumpkin really? after right. Halloween. You out of gas? Yeah, it's out of gas because it only had a gallon and a half in it. You didn't have me the gas can. That was Josh put the gas in it, not me. Walk back to the shop. Oh boy. I'm not coming back. I see several things about the car that are not at the tribute okay. level. Something fishy's going on. It's never over. pretty exciting right now. Um, Don and Michael called and said they're about four minutes away and this is kind of thrilling for me because again a huge fan of Don Coscarelli and Michael Baldwin. They, they do my kind of movies. Uh, love the Phantasm with the Cuda in it. Oh and there they are actually right there. Absolutely enthralled that the guys are here and I will be the first to admit I know I'm ice cold most of the time but I was nervous. I was biting my nails. Nice to see you. Hey Mark. Michael my friend. Uh, my name is Don Coscarelli and I'm a uh, filmmaker, writer, director and producer. My first big success was a movie called Phantasm which led to uh, several sequels Phantasm 2, Phantasm 3 and Phantasm 4 Oblivion. My name is A. Michael Baldwin, and uh, I am a writer and a producer out of Austin, Texas, and a sometimes actor. Um, the most uh, famous thing uh, that I've been involved in is a series of films called Phantasm. And uh, I started making these movies with my buddy Don Coscarelli when we were both a lot younger. I think I started when I was 13, um, starring in Phantasm. We've made a bunch of sequels. I gotta check out this RT Absolutely. first of all. Yeah. Absolutely. Sweet. This car this is, is beautiful. This is Royal's car. What year is it? It's a 1967 Coronet RT. 
It's a factory 440 Magnum car. It's all original numbers matching. This would be a B body, right? This is a B body yeah. for sure. Yeah, I absolutely. really, really like this car. Oh, it's great. Once we got the meet and greets done, we immediately went over to Royal's car. Michael just fell in love with it instantly. He seems to, I've noticed, like the B bodies in some of our conversations before. This car to me has a sort of executive hot rod feel. Yeah. Well, I think that that's what it would have probably been. This was the first real, I think, breakout for Chrysler. And I think it is. I mean, if you look at the inside, that's a handsome interior. Then. Right off the bat, first thing is I saw that RT parked out in front of the shop, and I just completely fell in love with that car. I think he's in love with Royal's Poop Box 67 Cornette RT, so. And so I think that car is bitching. All right, I'll take two. Yeah. Okay. One for me, too. They're on order, and there's a 24-month backlog. <laughs> we took a few minutes to talk about Royal's car. The guys both loved it. They were asking all kinds of questions. It just seemed like a natural segue to bring them out to the graveyard and, and just pull the big curtain back and let them see what we got. And oh, so you've got an entire row of B-bodies here. We, yeah. Um, these are, that's 72 Charger, 68 Charger, 72. Now, here's our Challenger. That's the sister to the Cuda. Okay, Mark, stop stalling. When are we yeah, going to see the CUDA? What's going on? It's coming. They, they're actually doing some last minute stuff on it over on the other side in the detail. I, the I promise. The only person here I've seen so far is Mark, and I hear some like banging and sawing back in the other room. I think something, something fishy is going on. Like maybe the car didn't come together, maybe he's going to try to pull a trick on us or something. I'm, I'm very skeptical. <laughs> Last minute stuff? It's be right. You mean you're not finished? You didn't make the deadline? I, I think he's not ready. I think Mark is definitely not ready. To me, it seems pretty obvious that they're late and that we're we're here and we're, you know, he's completely stalling. He's walking around showing us all the junkers. You know, they're great. They're cool. I'm certain someday they're going to be amazing. Yeah, he's totally stalling. He's not ready. Where's the car? I made the deadline. I made the deadline, but, you know, cars, there's about 4,000 parts and a couple of them might have uh -huh. took a little what we call dookie on me, uh, and so uh, they're fixing the dookie problem. Uh, they're right. doing a detail on it. I said, my men are not gonna be riding around in a dirty black car, No, okay? No. I do have a lot of trust in the guys to finish it. They've been pulling together really well. I gave them a bit of a, just a kind of a little pep talk right before I came out uh, as to what the potential downside could be if they screwed up. I'm gonna kick a hole in your front of your throat, tear your Adam's apple out, and replace it with a hard turd. I thought that was a darn good price yeah, on a, on a drop bad. top. Yeah. You know, seven, there it is. Oh. oh. Oh yeah, look nice. at this. Wow. I'm gonna say it takes your breath away. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Wow. It's got the elastomeric bumpers. Uh -huh. The vinyl top really, really wow. looks sweet. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. The louver windows. Yeah. Got the wing. This is beautiful. It is just <laughs> awesome. Wow. It really is awesome. I really like that uh, black bubble. I That's, love the shaker. Yeah, but the black shaker is, is, is sweet. Oh, versus it's, like the argent. Yeah, the yeah, it's, it's really, really sinister. All right, Don, I see several things about the car that are not at the okay, tribute I, level. I, I didn't want to bring that up. I think it was a Phantasm yeah. tribute car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no. I think we should check off the things that are not tribute. Oh, yeah. First thing is the flared fenders in the back, Don. Tell That's us about that. That's true. We had uh, we have flared wheel wells, yes. Mark. Yes, I that, uh, uh, Back in the mid-70s, that was a really sweet uh, muscle car addition. It's not exact. Yeah. It's not exact. Yeah. No. What are you laughing at? Freak? Long wheels? Short, I'd like to see. Well, that's small. true. You that's went. You it. went with the authentic Mopar wheels. Now I we went. It. We had Kragers, I, I think. Right. Yes, you did. You also had Krager SS's. Yeah. And no the pinstripe. The pinstripe's important. Yeah, the pinstripe. Bill important. Thornbury's brother What's actually Bill painted the pinstripe. But the cool thing is, is you do have the pistol grip without the console. Yes. That's very that's awesome. Very important. Yeah. Yep. I don't think we had a spoiler. Do we have a spoiler? No, we had no spoiler. Definitely not an N96 now, th car. This is like the Phantasm car on steroids, yeah. you know? The, the Phantasm car on steroids. But right. it is missing the sunroof. Oh yeah, the sunroof. Because we had to pop out of the sunroof and shoot at the hearse. It was a factory oh. sunroof? No, we just got a hole in yeah. it and popped yeah. in an aftermarket. Oh, it wasn't a factory sunroof. You can sunroof. believe that. Don Coscarelli's the butcher. He yeah. cut the roof. Mopar guys. I was he young. cut open a roof. I would never do it today. 
And what's yep. with the clown shoes? You guys shouldn't be. Wow, those, those are Converse. Those are hipster, hipster, hipster shoes. Those are hipster. Also oh, honest clown shoes. shoes. What? Yeah, they, they can all say what they want. I know what the original car looked like. I chose not to make it like the original car. I could have done that. I could have built it exactly. There's other things too that they're not mentioned. And the original car had headers on it. That's when Mikey's underneath there working on it and and uh, hits his brother with the hammer on the shoe because he's working on one of the headers is loose. So I know what's original and what's, what's not. It's a tribute car. This car is amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> That's all it is. is. <laughs> First off, I was supremely flattered that someone would go and take something out of one of my movies and invest so much time and money. Uh, but I know that Mark had a client who was really intent and, and willing to uh, support this thing. And it's just a, a, a pretty awesome concept. This thing's beautiful. It is just awesome. Wow. It really is awesome. Oh, I'm driving that car. I don't need to convince anybody. I'm going to get in that car and drive it. Well, you know what? Let me throw it back to Michael. Let's go. Let's, let, let's show off your talents. Let's go. Can you drive? still drive this Love car? It. You know, growing up Mopar and having driven some of the coolest cars on the planet, Hemis and six packs, convertibles, my 71 Phantasm homage car has got to be one of my favorites from a fun standpoint. It was just plain fun. We did try to stick to OE appearance on everything, but at the same time, it was a tribute car, so I had a little bit of latitude on it. Michael is 14 years old again. <laughs> yeah, I love this car. Driving around in the 71 Phantasm Cuda with uh, Michael Baldwin and Don Coscarelli, to say it's surreal is, is probably an understatement. I might even have pinched myself a couple times to make sure I wasn't dreaming. I mean, this is cool stuff. This is the kind of stuff that when I'm an old man sitting in a rocking chair on my porch someday, I can look back at the things that I've done and, and know in my heart and in my mind, I'm probably a handful of guys in the entire world that have experienced Mopar as much as a Mopar can be experienced. This has just been nothing but fantastic journey, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Uh, the Cuda was awesome. I mean, seeing it, uh, it's more than just triple black. I might call it, call it quintuple black. You've got the black bubble, you got the black body, you got the billboards, you got the black louvers, the black elastomerics. It's freaking awesome. I love this car. Drives like a car that you don't get to drive anymore. It's, it's a genuine muscle car, and you feel it. A lot of fun. Super cool. They, uh, Mark obviously and the whole team they did a great job. What do I think about Darren? Well, he's a nice guy. How come we don't sign the cars when we work on them? Who cares <laughs> about you? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See now. Nobody likes a nurse. All right. Here you go, Don. So, uh, Cascarelli, when are we making Phantasm Five anyway? Are you up to it? <laughs> yeah. From your lips to the tall man's ears. You heard it here Is first, that a yes? Folks. <laughs> You'll have to figure that out for yourself. Just remember, it's never over. <laughs> Seeing the kind of work that comes out of graveyard cars definitely gets my eyes open as to if I ever have a car that I want to get into some serious restoration, this would be probably the first place that I would start. It's been a really great day here at Graveyard Cars. Uh, having Don and Michael up has just been such a, a cool treat for everybody. I know we got a lot of signatures, uh, told some good stories. I learned a lot about the backstory on Phantasm. How do you like the car? I'm loving this car. Beautiful car. I've been waiting for them to get back. They had asked me if they could take the car for a drive about 10 minutes ago, and I said, yeah. How far is it to LA? I'd say about 1,000 miles. I don't know if they're uh, if the car's actually acting up or, you know, I kind of get worried that I don't have a cell phone for him. You're thinking what I'm thinking? Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. What about Mark? He'll be all right. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> what I'll do is I'll end up just uh, going inside and seeing if I can send him a quick email. Or... One sec. One sec before you go. Who's your number one grandpa? I've been well steady. She said, I am. Nothing emotional. I just want to tell you that I think you did a real good job, and I would appreciate it if you would quit your other job and come back here full time. I'll make sure that you're making at least what you're making, if not more, probably more. That's awesome. I appreciate that. You're welcome, buddy. It's a new Mark Warman in town. Really? Well, I don't know. We'll see. I'm just trying to move forward and not backward. We did a good job. We met our deadlines. 
We can do this thing. It's a pleasure to be on board. Now, while you're home being existential playing house, I'm gonna be in here working on this next car. I'm gonna go change a diaper now. Thank you. You push it in by yourself? Yeah. That's an awful close gap right there. Hey, thanks, man. Oh, it's just... You're a good guy. There's no way I would have met that deadline. If you actually tell anybody. <laughs> now, can we put a purple car together for once? Have you got all the parts? I have a lot of the parts. Sorry Let's about go. that Novocaine earlier. I know you, it made you wet yourself, so. No. Okay, I'm gonna close the door and get out of here. All right, give me some parts. If it isn't the prodigal son himself. Not a very observant person, are you? Why, you get a haircut? No? You lose weight? <laughs> Definitely not. Nothing new in the shop? I don't see anything. Your box, you know you see it. Don't be coy. No, not, not mine. I gave you my word, I'll help you work on it. But you have to keep your word. One, you're gonna help me with it. Number two, no more games. I've always helped you. Okay. I've been waiting for you to help me. I know you find this difficult to believe, but I'm hungry. No, you look like, you, you look like you're hungry. This season on Graveyard Cars, fueled by the success of our 1971 Phantasm Tribute Cuda. I love this car. The ghouls and I are waging war against impossible deadlines. Friday, all of this for Friday. Why don't we get a new? Impatient clients. You wanna know when your car's gonna be done. When's it gonna be done? And of course, each other. Yeah, game over, yippee ki yay mother Boom, Mark. With all new challenges ahead in the world watching our every step, we'll soon see if the guys and I have what it takes to be the best. No time, no time, no time. Let the charger down, roll it outside. Let the charger down, roll it outside. Let the charger down, roll it outside. We are jammed to the rafters with cars and work. No! It's not easy at work with Mark, but sometimes it gets a little worse, it gets a little crazier. That affects Josh. Will Darren finally accept the parts on his car? I mean, it's got to be good. Are really mine. Now it looks like I'm gonna have to buy more parts for my car that were stolen by mom. Will Holly hold her own in a shop full of guys? I saw Holly, what's she doing here? Go for it. I'm a woman, I can multitask. Okay. Can Josh stay focused and finally earn his keep? Where are you going? I'm going up to get the engine to push it out here and paint it. What part of all this did you miss? Hi, I'm 30 seconds ago. Did we get a chance to meet? Is this the year that Darren pushes me too far? I'm gonna bust every tooth out of your head and I'm gonna piss in your dead skull if you say anything negative again. And will the guys ever get over the fact that I'm a celebrity and they're not? You have ever thought the little kid from 14th Street would be getting a letter from somebody like that? Bill Goldberg, huge, huge muscle car guy, big Mopar guy. We're gonna put together a 68 GTX 440 automatic Jamaica Blue He's coming convertible. In. Big Bill Goldberg. Will foolish mistakes risk destroying a priceless car? or the lives of the crew. Will Royal finally reach his breaking point? He jumped me while I came out. Chrome Dome. What did I do? I didn't even do anything. Stay tuned this season as the Graveyard Cars team takes on more cars. Cuda Challenger. Dukes the Hazard Car. Cuda FE5 Rally Red. Plymouth Superbird. With even bigger stakes. This is exciting. In a no holds barred winner takes all battle to the end. Get him, get him, get him. Oh. The dead are coming back to life on this season of Graveyard Cars.